I hope you like the intro, it's a bit long, but I wanted to use all the clips so I can just get rid of them. I don't want to make a second video on this plane, as it's pretty straightforward, and I'd rather just keep the highlights there, get like a little, quick little montage, and then go into the actual game, because the biggest reason I put this game in is, because, well, you, you read the title probably, uh, I got 9 kills again, which uh, is time for celebration, which I celebrate with uh, doing a little video. Got Hazy over there, and his stock 152H, so... Bear with him for a bit, because this thing's stock is quite a pain to fly, it's not bad, don't get me wrong. It's just a bit frustrating. And even spaded, even though this thing is really good, it has some pretty... I wouldn't call it limitations. It's actually so good in certain scenarios that it's annoying. Uh, it doesn't lose any speed. As you can tell in most dogfights, and if you go back to the, the intro as well, and you look at my speed indicator, as I'm doing horizontals with my flaps down, uh, I barely lose any speed, and this might sound like a, a godsend. The problem is when I start diving on people, or I try to lose speed, I can't. So especially P51Hs and Spitfires, when they get on your 6, within like 900, 800 meters, and they're catching you, and they will catch you, because this thing is relatively slow, uh, you can't really reverse them unless they gun that web, and you really have to try to bleed the speed off. If they try to throttle drop you, uh, you're basically dead. Because you don't outturn the, the Spitfire, you don't outturn the P-51H, believe it or not. Uh, you outturn them with energy. And with energy I mean you're not losing it. So you can keep going up and you keep those maneuvers sustained. And they can do that. But if they're already on you, that makes it a lot easier uh, to stick on you. And when they already outturn you and they can spray their guns, because they have plenty of ammo. And they have pretty fast velocity guns. It makes it relatively easy for them to, to hose you down. 
which is the majority of my dad. P51Hs, A2Ds, as well as the, the Mark 24, not so much, but they're really good at pressuring this thing. So keep an eye on those things. All on that, this plane is pretty straightforward. And here we get a uh, full down tier versus allies 4.7, 5.7 gain. And it's an eye battle with clouds. So it's not the ideal position to be in. But at the same time, because this thing isn't very fast and it really relies on coming out of nowhere and getting that shot and then starting boom and zooming, uh, this is kind of an ideal map. But at the same time, people can really easily boom and zoom this thing because I don't have the situational awareness that I would like to have. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. I used that on the, the last video as well, but this time it's actually negative. So now I can come out of nowhere, but at the same time, they come out of nowhere as well. So I really have to keep my eyes peeled. And I really want to abuse the spotting mechanic. And as you saw, Hazy has three people on him and they're not spotted. And I know they're all on the deck, so I'm going towards him. I'm going to peel this P47N out of the air first. And then I will go over there. And you're going to see me do this quite a lot. Where I disengage just to get rid of the spotting and then I turn back in. I'm not too worried about the P51, he's engaged with one or two other guys. And I'm probably not spotted, I'm not too sure if I am or not. But considering the fact he's not coming straight for me, I'm probably good for now. And keep a close eye on the IAS that I have. I'm going 720, which isn't too fast. Like, it's fast for a prop, but it's not too fast on the deck. But I want you to pay attention to when I start maneuvering. And here he goes. F4U, 4B, and a Spitfire. There's very little you can do in a stock that wants to have 152H in that. And yeah, I start maneuvering. And look at my speed. I'm barely losing anything. Uh, he doesn't see me. He does last second, and he dodges my shot. Because the rudder and the roll at high speed isn't very good and i'm not talking about actual rudder compression that aa spooked me for a bit i thought those were the old 20 mils the us had but luckily they're red now so they're a little bit easier to distinguish from the rest and you can tell i'm at one and a half kilometers now going still 400 kph which is pretty exceptional considering i just zoomed in there did a 180 and i'm back at like one and a half to two kilometers if i wanted to stall myself out i could probably reach 2.3 which is kind of stupid and here's the P51D, he doesn't see me. He's preoccupied with someone else. Hope I can get the shot. And there you can tell the, the rudder is a bit wonky. And my aim is just not on par at the moment. He stalled out. I shot a bit too much to the left because he's falling out of the air. And I misjudge his trajectory because, well, his plane is pointing somewhere completely different as where he's actually going. Because he's stalling himself out. He's basically drifting through the air. So it made it a bit harder for me to uh, judge his position and where he was going to be. Quick adjustment when you see the tracers miss to the left, so I just adjust a bit to the right and squeeze the trigger again. And now you can see that everyone on the map is basically in one spot, and that's kind of the problem with the night battles. Everyone converges on the first guy they spot, which is why I want to get out of those spotting zones as soon as I can. He doesn't see me. Easy kill. F4U is going to roll right, so I'm going to prepare for that. And he's just going to basically stall himself out in my guns, and I'm just going to extend away again. And I'm still, I still have a lot of energy. The climb rate of this thing isn't the best. But because you don't really lose any speed. And I'm at, I'm at one kilometer again. I'm still going 400. I'm going to extend the wave a little bit. Hoping for the spot to disappear. And then two of my guys go down. Which is a bit unfortunate. But I know my radar, there's a guy on my, on this position for my right. He's going to be coming in. I'm just going to wait a little bit for him. As I don't want a 1v4 as everyone's on my 6. He's going to push the F4U off me, and he's going to go straight for the P51. Wouldn't have gone for him, but considering the F4U was going head on with him, and he got away with it. So in the end, it was actually the perfect shot for him. Good thing he went for him and not for the F4U, because he might have died in the head on, and maybe he didn't take down anyone at all. I might have gotten another kill for doing that, but I don't want to bet on it, as this is already a very sketchy situation. So I'm very thankful for all the help he has been giving me so far. And here I want to put my flaps down, go horizontal. Uh, why I'm not going vertical in a loop, because I'm, I will out energy them, but I will also fly straight into their guns. And doing a horizontal will bleed their speed a lot more, because they're pitching up as well. I can conserve my energy and actually keep my, my turn up a little bit. And then I focus on the Spitfire first. I could have killed the uh, F4U with ease there, but I'm way more confident dogfighting the F4U 4B than I am dogfighting an LF9 on the deck. So I'd rather kill him first. Now it's a 1v1. And this is a 1v1 that I can totally win. If I had killed the F4U there, there's a very big chance that I wouldn't have been able to kill the Spitfire right after. He might be able to prop hang me and he might be able to kill me 
while I am trying to stall him out. I like to focus on the guy that I will that will give me the most trouble in the long run, so I can then take my time for the second guy and not be as uh, tense. And that's seven kills. And now we're gonna look for the last two, and this is a bit of the the end of the match. That's kind of just collecting kills. I'm gonna kill uh, two more guys. Uh, one is a uh, Wyvern with uh, rockets on, <laughs> and uh, the other one is an A26. I will give you a little tip while I kill the A26. Uh, at this point I'm kind of like thinking what should I go for, where are they, and what can I collect my kills. And I'm thinking I don't see anyone, all the bases are bombed. So there's a very big chance that uh, the A26 is landing. We crit him at the start, he just set this uh, engine on fire. And the Wyvern is probably back to base because he killed so many people. And I have still plenty of ammo. So at this point I'm just trying to look around, trying to think about what I'm going to do. And in the end... I decided to just go straight for the airfield. I'm just gonna speed this up because it's pretty boring. So I now see the A26 and I'm, I'm going to turn my engine off. And why do I do that? He has gunners and it, when he starts hearing me, he's probably going to look in my direction and start gunning me down. But when I turn my engine off, it's a night battle. So I'm not too worried about him uh, spotting me at longer ranges. He shouldn't be hearing me at this moment. And I can just get really, really, really close. And there we go. His AI gunner kicked in in the end. The A26 is an absolute tank of a plane. So I wanted to make sure to shoot all the, the 30 mils and not really aim the 20s. And now the last guy is on the runway. And no, I'm not going to strafe him. Well, I'm going to attempt to. Because I'm really. I'm just waiting for him to take over at this point. I don't want to strafe him. Let's get out of the way. If he's going to take off, I'll fight him happily. No problem. It's 1v1. He's in a Wyvern. I'll, I'll give him the, the chance he needs. I don't like getting killed by AA either. But I saw that he started breaking. He was taking off and then he suddenly broke. And when I see that, I'm like, oh, he's going to J out. He's going to J out and I'm going to lose my last kill. I really wanted to get 9 again. It's, well, at this point, not very long ago, but still, they're not very common. Or well, not very common, I mean very rare. So I'm like, oh man, I need this kill. He despawns, and at this point, I'm thinking, okay, it's over. He's going to J out again, probably. I still tried it. Maybe he wasn't aware that he could do that. He's absolutely peppering me. And my turn rate is basically halved at this point. I have a very big oil leak. I want to RTB, I'm just going to keep an eye on him trying to respawn, because he's probably going to, yep, and there he is. So I'm just going to fly away, I'm going to let him take off, because you know, there's no way he's not going to J out the next time I'm going to try strafing him. You might call it scummy, it kind of is, but just don't land, and I was really, I'm just really greedy for that kill at this point. If you're the last alive and you're just on the runway and want to J out, be my guest, like I don't care. But when I already have 8 and you're that close, I, like, I really want to kill you. And I'm just going to wait for him to take off, because I know he's probably going to. Probably just watching me, watch the dot fly away from him so he can actually safely take off. If he can actually still see me. And at this point he's just waiting. A lot of waiting. I'm going to be aiming for the, the C point where I can land. And then maybe not get strafed, because that would be fantastic. But by now the Wyvern is taking off again. So I'm just going to let him fly away from his airfield. As I get as close as I can to mine. And I still have plenty of ammo. 49 shots per gun. And one in a 30 mil. Which I probably won't use. Because it's kind of redundant. The Wyvern is also flying tanks, so it's a bit... We'll have, to, we'll have to see what happens. Just turning my engine off so I'm not overheating it completely. And look at this turn rate compared to earlier. It's absolutely gone to shit. I see that the Wyvern is coming in for me now. So I want to dive. I can try to prop hang him. But with this turn rate I want to be as close as I can. And maybe bait him into a dogfight. And if I'm above him... He's probably going to be scared to actually turn with me, since I'm well, I, I'm above him, and it looks like I have a very, like very big energy advantage. I'm not going to go anywhere near that gun, 
He has 1200 rounds and I know he's probably not too scared about spraying them. There goes his payload. And at this point I'm going to catch him. His acceleration isn't good enough. He's close range. And there he goes. And that's nine. Two days in a row. Of course, these games were recorded a bit further between. I didn't get uh, nine two days in a row. That'd be uh, I'd be a bit more aesthetic about that than I am now. Still very happy with the result. I'm going to be wishing you all a very nice weekend. Or what's left of it anyway, it's already Sunday. I'm just going to be rolling the, the credits or the, the rewards as I always do. I'm not researching anything, I don't have premium, so take them with a grain of salt. But I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.